Hi, I'm Larry of Confident Canines. I'm here in Airdrie, the beautiful community Bayside. So today we're gonna to share with you some tips and some training information that will help you build yourself into a responsible dog owner and your dog into a great canine citizen. So let's get started. So when we're working with dogs, there's four fundamentals to teaching a dog, at least four that I believe in and live by. The first fundamental rule is you never ask a dog to do anything for you. If you ask them, you give them options, and if we give them an option, then we must accept what they give, they give us. Otherwise, in their mind, we are not being fair to them. So don't ask, tell. That doesn't mean we shout at them. It just means that we're decisive. It would be like, Finn, sit. Not Finn, sit. That's the difference. Rule number two, don't tell them twice. If we get in the habit of telling a dog twice, we're gonna end up telling them over and over and over again. And again, they realize that we'll always give them a second chance. If, for example, they're racing towards a busy street and we had to call them five, six, seven or more times, the last time he may not hear us. So teach your dog to listen to you the first time. Rule number three is when you're teaching a dog, you must always be in a position to teach. You cannot teach a dog to come back when called if you can't make him. You can't teach him to sit if you can't, you're not in a position to show him how to sit or where to sit. For example, a lot of people try to teach a dog to come back, but they got no means to, and the dog does whatever he wants. So don't try it without a leash. That's where so many people go wrong. Rule number four, the most important rule of all, if you forget the others or make a mistake on one of the others, don't worry too much about it. Always try to remember, keep it fun, most important. If your dog is not having fun, your dog will not learn and will not want to learn. Training a dog is, I, I prefer to call it building a relationship with the dog. And we do that by having fun and have them work for us because they want to. All right, so we're going to talk about equipment and there's a wide, wide range of equipment, but we'll talk about some of the more common ones and the pros and cons of each. One of the most basic and most important is poop bags. What's that saying? Don't leave home without them. Don't take just one, take many. Now this poop bag holder here attaches to the to the leash or the collar, and it holds several poop bags. Another way to do it is you can tie them to your leash. You can tie several there uh, in a row, like little flags, and it looks good. Or if all else fails, you don't feel comfortable with either, you just stick some in your pocket. But always, again, take more than once, very important. You can't be a good, responsible citizen if you don't pick up after your dog. So poop bags, important. Then we'll talk about leashes. Now, two very, very common leashes. Um, nylon is one, very, very common, very strong. But for small dogs, they work just fine. On some of the bigger dogs that may have a tendency to pull, they're less than ideal. If it pulls through your hand, it will burn you and it hurts. And if it hurts, you don't want to use it. So bigger dogs, it's very important that you try out a leather leash. Nylon works fine for the small dogs, but not so great for the larger dogs. When I go to bigger dogs, I prefer to always arm myself with a good leather leash. Why? Well, they're strong. If it slides through your hand, it does not burn, but it's a lot less likely to slide because when you squeeze on this, it's very, 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 you get a good grip. So very important. Big dogs lean towards a leather leash. Small dogs is not that important. 
collars. This collar here, the, the flat collar, been around forever. It works just fine, except there are some cons to it. One is, if it's not fit properly, and it's hard to fit them tight enough, if a dog gets frightened and backs up, they can quite easily pull out of them. And so we ne certainly would never want that to happen if we're in an area where there's traffic or any other area for that matter. So not the best, but for some dogs, you, they work just fine. The other one is a martingale and it will have a piece of chain in here um, and it's limited slip and they will only tighten a little bit. But the advantage they have over this flat collar is that dogs can't slip out of them, if they're fit properly at least. Be careful if you've got a dog that is overly exuberant, put the proper collar on. The collar I prefer to use on most dogs, but not all, uh, is called a training collar. Training collars are often referred to as choke collars. Training collar, proper, proper name. It lays nice on their neck, just like a necklace would, very comfortable. Let's air circulate around it so you get less scratching. And in the event you have to check your dog, just a little check like that. And it touches them over on the left side of their neck and it acts like a reminder. So very strong, very effective, and they look good too. Last but not least, we're going to talk about this controversial muzzle. So many people today see a dog with a muzzle on, they make the assumption that that dog is aggressive. It may be, but chances are it isn't. It may be that they don't know the dog, they've just rescued it and they're giving it a new home. And as part of responsible dog ownership, they're not gonna take any chances. So they throw a muzzle on it until they get to know their dog and see how it reacts to other dogs, people, etc. Another reason is some dogs have sensitive stomachs and they're on a prescribed diet and they don't want their dog picking things up because that will result in the dog becoming sick. So they put this on to prevent dogs from picking things up off the ground. And then of course, if your dog is aggressive or has aggressive tendencies, this will always make the dog safe until you work those tendencies out of the dog. So muzzles are not necessarily just for aggressive dogs. There are many reasons for, that people may use them. So as a good neighbor, we're not gonna judge. Thank you. Thanks for joining us in Genesis Land's beautiful community of Bayside. Be sure to check out our blog on genesisland.com and remember to have fun with your dogs.